Yo, what's up guys? You're back with your man, Tech Nick, and today I have the Oppo Reno Ace with me. We have the starting price at the top over there, and the first thing in the box is this horrible silicon case. I prefer hard ones, but it's not the end of the world. We have USB 2.0 transfer speeds between your PC and your phone, but I like the little yellow accents that they have with the USB type A to type C cable. Then we also have this wonderful 65 watt, the first fastest charging phone in the world, well the first to the standard, 10 volts, 6.5 amps, times the two together and you get 65 watts. The phone looks absolutely stunning, I got the starry blue edition over here and I really do dig the color of it, it almost has like a shimmery black blue look, looks very elegant especially with those gold accent oppo logos at the back there. We have the power button on the right hand side which is indented so it feels pretty cool. Then we also have the SIM tray over here which is dual SIM. Unfortunately there is no micro SD card slot as they claim online. Many people have claimed this so there is no micro SD card slot here on the base variant or any others. The top is nice and clean and on the left we actually have split volume rockers. So many people have told me that they prefer this and I do too. It's nice and easy to feel. We actually have a headphone jack here and we have a type C port over there as well and we also have a downward firing speaker at the bottom there too guys and this is paired with a front facing speaker which is actually the mic which doubles up as a speaker for dual sounding stereo speakers then we have a 16 megapixel f 2.0 selfie cam and on the back we have a 48 megapixel sony imx 586 sensor this is an aperture of f 1.7 and houses optical image stabilization we then have a 13 megapixel telephoto lens with an aperture of f 2.4 and we have an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens which has an aperture of f 2.2 down below it. The last one that we do have is a 2 megapixel black and white lens. This has an aperture of f2.4. I'm not too sure why they did this. Huawei had it in their older phones such as the P9 series phones and before it, though they kind of ditched that over the years since it wasn't very useful. This would have been better to be a depth effect camera or maybe even a macro lens if they had to throw an extra camera in. Overall, Color OS 6 looks pretty darn good, I must say. It looks a lot more stock than the Oppo Find X that I used before it. And we have this wonderful 90Hz refresh rate panel, just like seen on the OnePlus 7T. Now there was a software update straight out the box, so I have gone ahead and updated the phone over there. We do have ColorOS 6.1, unfortunately this is still skinned over Android 9 Pie, but we will be seeing a very very soon Android 10 update. I'm not sure why it didn't come with Android 10 in the box, but we do have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus processing chip, and this is the 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig version. This is the base variant, so it shoots at about $450. Things feel really nice and smooth going throughout the OS and that 90 hertz panel is certainly up there with the top dogs. I must say it's really hard to go back to a 60 after using a 90 hertz panel. The fingerprint sensor is optical, it is not ultrasonic like Samsung's, though it works extremely snappy, pretty much just like the OnePlus, since BBK Electronics owns OnePlus, Oppo and Vivo, so this is a OnePlus sister company. The facial recognition is not that secure, but it is seriously snappy. Now we're going to move on to camera, and if you guys haven't noticed at the bottom, I have highlighted yellow on what we are currently on, there's the time in the middle. We went from that 8 megapixel ultra wide to a 48 megapixel main still over here with my friend Mr. Groot. Now we are on the 12 megapixel bind shot. This does not say raw because it is actually bind. It is interpolated down to 12 megapixels. We also use the bind shot for a portrait effect over here. And we also have that wonderful two times optical zoom telephoto lens, which looks pretty decent indoors. I also took a picture outside my window on the 20th floor of my building here in China. Start with the ultra wide, then go to the main 48 megapixel snapper over here. And things look really classy, but I do think that things look a lot better with the 12 megapixel bind shot. Remember, this is still using that 48 megapixel sensor. The telephoto 2x optical looks absolutely stunning. I can't see any flaws with it. And we do have 5x hybrid zoom too, which pairs digital and optical together, and it looks seriously good. We have 10 times, but this is just limited to digital zoom, so it doesn't look the best. And a max of 20 times digital zoom, so it doesn't look incredible, but it still looks bearable if you ask me. With that 16 megapixel selfie snapper, this is a raw shot, and we're gonna move on to the portrait shot over here. I think that the colors look pretty washed out. There is no beautify effects on here, but things look pretty good. Now we're recording 4K at 60 frames per second. Thank goodness that they have included this option over here. Things look really good with optical image stabilization, but as soon as you go into the telephoto lens with two times optical zoom, you lose that optical image stabilization. Going into five times, you can still record and things don't look 
terrible, I guess. But there is once again no optical image stabilization here. But going back out, things look really nice and stable with 4K60. Now for the charge test, as you guys can see at the bottom over there, we are currently sitting on 49% of charge of battery over here at the box. So we're gonna go ahead and test them in five minute intervals until the end to see how they go. So if you guys have a look at the top of the screen over there, you will clearly see that right about now after five minutes, 49%, 70% charged in just five minutes, guys. That's 21% in the second half of your battery life which actually takes longer to charge. So bear that in mind, the beginning percentages are usually quicker, but we will have a full charge test coming out in 10 minutes, 41%. That is absolutely incredible with this 65 watt charger. I've never seen such fast charging speeds in my life, guys. It is absolutely insane. Now moving on to that 100% mark over here as we trickle to it, 16 minutes from 49% to 100%. That is 51% in just 16 minutes, guys. That is absolutely incredible. Good on you, Oppo. That is superb. I've never seen anything like that. Now, moving on to an Antutu benchmark run here. We have the Vivo Nex 3 5G on my right-hand side. They're both running Antutu version 8.1.0 over here. And as you guys can see, we are on Antutu at the bottom over there. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, please make sure that you guys hit subscribe there too. I really have been enjoying making all of these unboxings and unfortunately this one has been a bit of a sad one in the performance department for the Oppo Runo Ace. We're only hitting scores of 400,000 where we almost have 100,000 more on the Vivo Nex, actually 490,000. But looking at other Snapdragon phones, we're pretty much hitting 470,000 on average with other Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset phones and the Oppo Runo Ace is seriously disappointing. I really hope that they fix this in a future software update. The battery degrees temperature which is not too bad with 34 degrees Celsius and the CPU at 41 degrees Celsius is not too bad either. We're pretty much hitting the averages on both the temperatures settings over here, guys. Nothing too hot in my hands with the Oppo Reno Ace. I just wanted to plug the cover on for you guys just to let you guys know what it looks like just before we wrap this video up. And I think it looks okay, though I'm not a big fan of these soft silicon cases, so I'll just chuck that one out and get a new one. The good thing is that we can get the Play Store on here and Google is rooted straight into the settings. So you can go ahead and sign in. Everything works nice and dandy on that front. And honestly, the Oppo Reno's 6.5 inch AMOLED display looks absolutely gorgeous with a 90 hertz refresh rate panel. That 65 watt charging block is absolutely awesome for that 4,000 milliampere battery. And its design looks absolutely stellar. Four cameras on the back, there's really little to complain about when it comes to the Oppo Reno, especially with build quality with Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and the back of the phone. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. This is one stunning phone, and until next time, guys, this is Technic.